Today's readings make it clear that sin is a serious matter, that we need the forgiveness of sins through baptism, that we need the sacrament of reconciliation, for without it we are lost and we forget what it is that Jesus came to do. You know, both Jesus and the Apostle James speak in bold language about the destruction caused by sin and its consequences, both in this life and in eternal life. Now, it's important that we understand that sin is an obstacle. It's not an outdated, arbitrary list of do's and don'ts. Rather, it's simply the fact that God created us a certain way, and there's certain things that are good for us, and there's things that are bad for us. You know, we can, that's easy to see with things that we make. You know, we make cars. If you put water in the gas tank, it's bad for the car. If you maintain the car, it's good for the car. You know, we make microwaves. If you put metal in the microwave, it's bad for the microwave. It's just that things are made. There's a certain nature to them. There's a certain sense to them. And when you act contrary to that, it's an obstacle. Sin weakens us, and it hurts others around us, because that's what sin is. That's what sin does. And that's true even if we don't immediately see who it is that's hurt by our sins, because God sees a lot farther than we do. And our Creator knows what's good for us, even if there's things that we don't see. But we remember this, the good news is that Jesus came to free us from sin. Jesus gives us wisdom and guidance through the church so that we can learn to say with the psalmist, the precepts of the Lord are good, rejoicing the heart. Acknowledging the reality of sin is necessary to understand the most basic truths of Christianity and in order to make any for in order to make any sense of the gospel we have to acknowledge the reality of sin you know that sin in our own lives of which we repent of or sin in the world around us you know gospel means good news and there's different ways to say to articulate what this good news is but all of them lose their meaning if we ignore the reality of sin you know, there, there's three basic ways of, our, uh, of saying what the good news consists of. You know, one way is that Jesus died to free us from our sins. Jesus died for the forgiveness of sins. You know, a second way to think about, what, uh, to, to speak of the good news is to say that the kingdom of God is at hand. Or a third way would be to say that God has reconciled us to himself. But all of those lose their meaning if we ignore the reality of sin, if we're complacent towards sin. I mean, if, we, if, if there's no sin, then Jesus can't free us from sin, and, there's no, and, the, God, and the cross is emptied of its meaning. You know, if there's no sin, then we don't need a, sa a redeemer, we don't need a savior, and there's no, there's no sense in talking about Jesus dying to save us from sin. You know, another way of thinking about the, king, uh, about the gospel is that the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, the kingdom of God is, you know, being in right rel relationship with us, with others, recognizing a sense of justice. But we have to recognize what is it that prevents the kingdom of God from being realized in our midst? It's sin. We think about, you know, the third way of announcing the good news. God has reconciled us. But again, if there's no sin, there's no need for reconciliation. The, 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 the good news is empty of meaning. So we have to acknowledge the reality of sin, and, and James and Jesus are both very clear. that sin is a real obstacle. It's an obstacle that we want to remove through faith in Christ Jesus. The contemporary, nowadays there's a lot of misunderstanding about sin, or there's this like reluctance to talk about sin, to acknowledge sin. For some reason I, that I don't understand is there's, a, uh, there's this aversion to repentance, to, to the sacrament of reconciliation. It makes no sense to me because that's what Jesus came to do. 
He came to save us. But this contemporary misunderstanding about sin is rooted in a more fundamental misunderstanding about what it means to be human. We've forgotten who we are. The Christian vision finds our origin in God and our fulfillment in God. He created us for himself. That is what's going to awaken our heart. That's what's going to enliven us. That's what's going to give us the energy to live, to live with others, to live for others. That's the Christian understanding of what it means to be human. God created us to love him, to be loved by him, to share that love with the others in our life. The contemporary vision, which tries to push God out of the picture, begins with one's own will. And it proposes, you know, self-fulfillment in whatever you decide. You have to choose for yourself what's the most important thing in your life. And, and it acts as if that's an, a neutral choice. And so for some, they'll choose sports. Some will choose to commit, commit to entrust them, commit themselves to a noble cause. Some choose family, some choose fame. I mean, we see that especially, it, we, we might see that with, you know, social media influencers, that fame becomes what their, what their, their sense, what their, what their reason for living is. And oftentimes it's not God. And, men, and it's not uncommon in this contemporary misunderstanding of what it means to be human to choose an end in which God becomes an obstacle. Such is the difficulty, the challenge of what we find ourselves in. But we can be strengthened and reminded by the symbols of our own baptism. And so, and, and so we think about what is it that bapti our baptism and the symbols of our baptism, what does it teach us about the Christian life in this authentic Christian vision as opposed to this contemporary misunderstanding that would try to hide the reality of sin. And so we think about in baptism. You know, when we come for baptism, we're not covered with this massage oil for our own comfort but rather it's a water that cleanses us from sin. So if we're seeking comfort above all else, we've lost the sense of our baptism. You know, a baptism, we're, we, don't, we, we, we do not receive you know, some image of a heart just so we feel good, but rather we receive a white garment that makes us a new creation. It's not just about feeling a certain way, but it's rather to change us inside and out, to make us a wholly new creation, to, to, to give us this ability to love more deeply than, than we realized, the, the, this capacity for a self-giving love, this capacity for an awareness to see clearly the things of God, to love the things of heaven, to know that we're created for something bigger than this world. That we don't receive a heart to make us feel good, we receive a white garment to make us a new creation. At baptism, we don't receive a mirror to see how good we are. We receive the light of Christ. We receive the light of Christ so we can see Him. We receive the light of Christ so we can see clearly and judge clearly about the things, in, uh, about the, the action, the choices before us. We receive this light of Christ so that others see not us, but him. We do not receive a Twitter handle or an Instagram account. We receive a name. Yo, know, yeah, yeah, last uh, yesterday afternoon, it was Bianca Marie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because too often a Twitter account only shows, uh, uh, like an Instagram account only shows like this very sanitized little itty bit of our life. At baptism we receive a name because we're to be fully known by God. At baptism we don't receive a bell to call others to our service, but rather we receive the cross to remind us that we're to bear with all others, to bear for others, and ultimately to share the cross of Christ so as to share in his resurrection 
and eternal life. At baptism, we receive not a spirit of pride and self-conceit, but we receive the Holy Spirit, a spirit of courage, of love, and of self-control. And to that I say with Moses, would that all of God's children, would that all of God's people be filled with the Spirit. But our bapt- we have to remember who we are. You know, just as creatures, people who are created by God for God, we have to remember who we are we, that we're, uh, who, as people, as Christians, as people who are called to life in Christ. And it's not a life of ease, it's a life of labor, but it's a life full of meaning and deep relationships and of authentic love. And that rejects the obstacles to love, it rejects the half truths that the rest of the world would present to us. But yes, we hear, we hear Jesus speaks plainly of the devastation of sin. You know, he is exaggerating when he says, cut off your hand, cut off your foot, pluck out your eye. But he's making it clear. Sin is an obstacle. It hurts us. And we need to repent. We need to be forgiven. And St. James speaks very, very boldly to the people of his day. You know, they, they, he says, you know, you're living a life of luxury. But in the end, he says that your gold and silver is going to wither. It's going to be a testimony against you. He's, he said, and, and so because they, they lost that sense of sin and they sought something less. So today we renew our life in Christ. We allow Christ to fill us with his grace. We seek his mercy and we renew our commitment to repent of sin and to live for God.